Hey everybody, this is Kevin Mitchell. Today I'm going to do a, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to keep a 5 to 10 minute video. Uh, that's the goal, to go through this package I've created, Alexa app. I've got another video that's a bit longer, it's about 30 minutes, uh, that I made about a week and a half or something ago. Um, but that was a earlier version, a lot's changed since then. I think uh, things are shaping up a lot better with this uh, this project than they were back then. So I've decided just to start with a short video. And if anybody's interested in sort of a more in-depth step-by-step -step guide on installing this package, setting it up, and so forth, let me know. Um, for those or for anybody else, I'd recommend first though starting at the uh, the GitHub page for this Alexa application. Um, there is a installation section which goes through all the steps you need to, to actually get everything up and up and running. I've already done all these steps for this video. Again, the goal being to keep it somewhat short. Um, things like adding a provider, adding some uh, a piece of middleware if you're interested in sort of the security features of this package. Um, you know, a migration file if you'd like to use the. You don't actually need to use the the migration, of course, but uh, the migration is is provided, so you know how to how to run the Laravel's uh, publish features, that kind of thing. Um, but again, check it out all here in the in the installation instructions, usage, configuration, all that sort of stuff is is in here is in this uh, README file. Um, only other thing to say is that rather than actually using my Echo, I decided just to set up this uh, REST client to do this demo. Um, this is a request straight out of uh, the actual, uh, my straight out from my, my test development web server. This, so this actually came from uh, Alexa App Kit, the actual Amazon request. Um, the the body, the headers, all of it, it's all the same. Um, but I'm just sending it to a, a Vagrant box that I've got running locally here, um, and I'm sending it to the slash Alexa um, route or URI, I guess you might call it. Um, so, for now, this should do nothing, or it should be a 404, um, because uh, we have nothing, nothing in place right now. And there we go, 404. An eight-second 404, of course, for some reason. Um, had some weird vagrant issues lately, but that looks a little better. 900 milliseconds. Anyway, so again, that's kind of the setup. That's where we're starting from. Now I'm going to jump right into the code. The only thing I've done is run a migration, although I'm going to actually run it right now to make sure that I've got a fresh database. So I've run the migration that I mentioned, and I've added these, uh, I've grabbed two things from the, uh, the container, Laravel's container. I've grabbed the Alexa router, and I've grabbed this, uh, this tool called Alexa. Um, both of these have uh, facades or aliases that I've actually already registered, but I'm not going to use them just so I have autocomplete. But one of them is Alexa route, and one of them is just Alexa. At least that's the recommended alias that I'm using, um, or that I choose to use. Of course, you could specify something else if, if you wanted, I believe. Okay, so what does this package actually do? The main thing, well, there's two things. The first is the idea is to allow a developer to route requests from App kit, basically coming in from uh, from Amazon from their device, and make it easier to route those to uh, you know a closure or a controller, and have it feel very very similar to how uh, routing works within Laravel or Lumen. So um, the way I've done that is the way I, I I chose to do that is by adding basically a new router, and I took some of these ideas I should mention to by uh, from one of Jason Lewis's packages called uh, it's called Dingo API, um, and what I've essentially done is copied the Amazon router, or the I'm sorry, the Laravel or Lumen router, and I basically run the requests that are coming in first through our router if they match certain requirements, um, and then if they don't match these requirements, then I then of course they run through normal Laravel router. So uh, you can still do everything you do with Laravel, add middleware and everything else. Um, and the request will get where it needs to go. But you can also add these new types of uh, routes to your application. So with that said, what we'll do is we can do something like Alexa Router Launch. Uh, if you're not familiar with Amazon app, uh, 
AppKit sort of API, then you may want to read a bit about that. But uh, basically, there's three types of requests that can come in. There's a launch request, there's an intent request, and there's a session ended request. Um, and these are probably kind of self explanatory, but launch is when your application first starts. Intent is uh, basically everything else that uh, isn't the launch and the end. And session ended is, of course, the actual closing of your application. Now, the request that I have uh, set up within our REST client here is an intent request. Um, type intent, and it has a name of choose meal. So rather than within my application having to get the, the body of the request, figure out the type of request it was, and then route it based on something like, for instance, an intent name, I can do that all here. So what I can do is I say Alexa router intent. I specify the the URI or the where this is actually going to be coming from. So in this case, slash Alexa. Uh, the intent name in this case, uh, choose meal. And then the actual ac action. So what I what I actually want to do again, just like Laravel, I could use a uh, a controller action here or uh, a closure. I'm going to use a closure for the sake of speed. We're going to use Alexa. And that's basically what the first part of this does. It makes it easier for you to route, use a developer to route uh, requests from the device to your application and throughout your application. And then the second thing that I've done is I've created a number of classes that, again, I'm not going to go into too much depth with, but basically a number of classes that allow you to do a bunch of stuff with the request and the response. So um, with the response, what we can do is Rather than uh, you know returning some big long ugly JSON string and, and creating this thing ourselves, all we have to do is we have we can say return Alexa say hello, and that's all we need to do. So we're just uh, we're saying hello. Uh, this looks even better and is even nicer actually with the aliases or facades because we can just do Alexa say hello. There's a bunch of other features that we can also add on to this, but let's check this out first to make sure everything's working. Yep, there we go. So this is a uh, valid. If you check the documentation, it matches up perfectly. This is a valid response, and uh, Amazon and AppKit will be quite happy with this, and Alexa will say hello. We can do a bunch of other things. Uh, here you can see should session end is set to false. If we wanted to end the session, we could say uh, end session. Uh, if you wanted to add a card, which is what Amazon calls the sort of notification that pops up in the companion app, we could say card, add a new card, um, pass in a title, hello, we could add a subtitle on the body and so forth. Um, card. Oh, missing parenthesis. Okay, and if we send this, you still still get a valid response, but now we're ending the session, and you can see that there's this title that's also passed in. Okay, um, so that's great. So this is just a way to to simplify actually sending a response, um, but we can do a lot more. Um, again, some things I won't go into. For instance, we can pull out. Um, session values, so we could say, for instance, Alexa session uh, key. So if you had some session key, um, we could set this value. Um, we can pull out information from a slot. So slots are the things that actually come in with your intent. Again, if these words don't mean much to you, it's worth checking the documentation. But for example, uh, hello. Uh, your meal choice was, and then we can say Alexa slot meal. Uh, actually, I think it may be capitalized. Yeah. So the slot here, this is basically again just a key value pair of sorts, but the slot is uh, something you define in the JSON file to give to Amazon. Um, we can pull that out using this syntax. So let's check that out, see if that works. Yep, 
So you can see it pulled that slot value out. Um, and there's a bunch more things that you can do. Again, accessing session data and so forth. But there's more we can do. Um, one of the things when I've been writing applications, I found, uh, for example, I'm writing uh, this sample application uh, for telling anti-jokes. If you're not sure what that is, I'd, if you're into anti-joke humor, potentially, I'd definitely take a look at, at, uh, at Google. Um, but basically, it's a joke sample application I've been writing. And one of the things I, I decide I'd like to do, or not do rather, is tell the same joke twice. So to make sure I don't do that, what I have to do is I've got to keep track of when somebody connects and somebody asks for a joke or an anti-joke, I have to uh, know who they are, basically. So I thought it would be nice if we had something similar to auth user within Laravel. I thought it would be nice if we could do something like auth or Alexa device to get a hold of the actual device. Uh, and so I did that, um, and essentially what that allows us to do is something like this. Device equals, again, I'm not using the, the alias or facade, but uh, device. So that's going to use some of the data from the post request from the request and try to find a device uh, in the persistence, uh, the persistence layer that you've configured. Um, there's Eloquent, Database. Uh, again, there's a sample migration that I mentioned earlier that comes with, uh, with this application. Uh, and the sample eloquent model, sample generic database model, all that comes with the package. Again, check the documentation if you're interested. For now, there isn't much to set up, and I've actually done it. So what we can do is just this. We can check to see if the device uh, is recognized, and we can say uh, if there's not a oops, if there's not a device. Uh, then we will make a new device. And we will set the device's device ID to the user ID request um, that is passed in. Uh, I added, uh, just for this demo, I added uh, just a simple new column to this database table called name. So I'm just going to set this to something like Kevin. And we'll save that device. And we'll s tell the user that we don't know them yet. We don't know you yet. Okay, so if if you connect to this application for the first time, uh, then there'll be no record of this particular user uh, or the particular device. So we'll go ahead and create the new device. And just for the sake of a demo, the first time we'll say that we don't know them. But the second time, or an maybe not the second, or the, but the third or the fourth time, um, we will know the user. And so we could say something like, Alexa, say, welcome back, device name. And we have to return these. Um, OK. So the way this should work is the first time through, uh, the device won't be recognized, so we'll create a new device and let the user know. And the second time through, you'll see that, again, all we have to do is pull the device out, and uh, we'll know all sorts of stuff about them. So let's give it a shot. There you go. We don't know you yet. And the second time, welcome back, Kevin. So whether or not you use this for some sort of, uh, again, uh, sort of, personalization of the actual user and something you respond to, like, for again, asking them what their name is and then remembering that, or if you just use it sort of behind the scenes to keep track of each device so you have an idea of, um, you know, what interactions the user has done before, that type of thing. It's up to you, of course, but all that functionality is here. Um, and the last thing I'll show just for, uh, just sort of for, Completion, because this was, a, I think, a big and important feature that hopefully users and developers won't have to worry about themselves. Um, I've configured a number of things, again, within this application. All of it's covered in the GitHub page. But uh, one of the things that I've done is I have enabled a certificate check to verify that this uh, uh, signature chain and that the uh, cert is, in fact, valid. Um, 
and you'll notice battery is about to die. Uh, if I add a space to this request, for instance, and I send this request, you'll notice that I do not get a response. And in fact, I get the request to not validate against their certificate chain. So basically, that's just a quick, although certainly not a complete uh, demonstration that in fact, this certificate chain is actually being checked. Um, Timestamp is being checked. Everything specified in uh, Amazon's requirements and specifications should be checked. Again, I would love people to take a look and verify that, test this, and tell me what other features you'd like, uh, and let me know if you'd like more in-depth uh, video tutorial. For now, thank you very much.